Hey y'all, I'm back with another video. Um, I hope all is well. I pray that, you know, this video finds you in good health and it finds you, whether you're encouraged or not, that after you watch this video, you will be encouraged. Um, you will have some understanding, you will be enlightened or whatever it is the Lord want to do through this word in Jesus name. Um, but the Lord literally laid on my spirit. I know it's been a while. I ain't going to make no excuses. Just pray for me, okay? Um, but the Lord uh, literally laid in my spirit um, about the difference between influence and um, motivation. And so just to jump right into it, I want to get into the meaning of, I believe we're going to go. Okay, so I'll go motivation first. So the meaning of motivation, the definition is the act of the act or process of giving someone a reason for doing something. So when you think about motivation, I don't know what comes to your mind, but what came to my mind was literally like um a motivated a motive a motivated a motivating a motivational speaker like literally someone that like stands and just like inspires or motivate people to do something or you know give them a reason why talks them into it kind of thing right um and as a believer the lord don't want us to be motivated motivational speakers he want us to be he want us to have influence over people and and the difference would be a motivational speaker, like I said, um, is the act or process of giving someone the reason for doing something. So we, it's like you giving somebody the scriptures. You're telling them like, hey, um, the Bible says this, right? Or you should do this because if you don't do this, this may happen. Or, you know, God loves you so much. He wants you to have a good life. He wants you to walk in the way of godliness, walk in the way of holiness, we can tell people those things all day long, but even as a believer, we're not called to motivate people to do the right thing. We're called to show them what the right thing looks like as we live it out ourselves. And that's why the definition of influence, check this out. It says um, the capacity to have an effect on the character, development, or behavior of someone or something or the effect itself. That's, and in a negative way, the, the, the description that they give here is like the influence of television violence. Like, you know, that's why our ear and our eye gates are important because it can influence you in a certain type of way to either feel certain type of uh, emotions or to act out um, the things you see other people doing. So this is why the Lord gave me this literally was like he wanted us as believers to be more of an influence on people um to have the capacity to have an effect on their character their development or the behavior of the people that we're around we should be more effective on them than they are on us um and i want to give you guys a scripture because i feel like that is necessary glory to god and this is, and just to give y'all exactly why the Lord gave me this as well was because he don't want us to be hearers of the word only because somebody that is motivating you, they can tell you what the Bible says. They can quote the Bible verbatim. They can tell you um, what the scripture says and, you know, all those kind of things. But those that are actually following the word of God, you will see fruit in their life. You will have their, their influence will impact people. Um, it will directly impact people, even those that are in their household, living with them, their family members outside of their own household. It will um, have effect on those that, you know, even on their social media um, platforms and stuff like that. Um, so I want to go to James chapter 1, 22 through 26. And it says... Um, and the Bible says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. 
and the verse continues it says for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in the mirror for he looks at himself and goes away at and at once he forgets what he's like so literally that's like you coming to church every sunday you hearing the word you going to bible study on wednesdays you're hearing the word of god go forth and you leave out of there and forget what it was about because you was only motivated while you were there. You were excited. You were jumping around, screaming, you know, hollering and shouting, amen, pastor. You know how that go, right? But when you are influenced by the word of God, where the word of God have influence over you, um, it will literally cause things to change within you um, because you're actually applying what you're hearing. You're not just being motivated and excited for a moment and then when you leave out of the presence of God, you go back to your normal way of thinking, your normal way of handling things, your normal way of operating, right? Um, eventually, change will start to happen. Eventually, a shift will start to take place in your mindset, the way you see things, the way you think about life. Um, it, will, it will cause you to look upon yourself, you know, to check your heart, check your character, to check to see if you're operating the way the Bible tells you, the way God is telling us that we should operate. And no, we know we're not going to get everything right. But for the most part, as a believer, you your main desire is to seek after pleasing the Lord, right? And doing what pleases him. And so you can see me on that <laughs> right there. But doing what uh, pleases him is what our main desire is in all reality. So we want to stay focused on that. We want to keep our minds stayed on that. That's the, our initial purpose and reasoning for um, following Christ is to please him, is to serve him, um, is to lay down our life and pick up um, the cross to follow God. And so we don't want to just sit in church and become a person that warms up a seat in a pew. Or if you go to online ministry, you know, you uh, go on Zooms or you you stream your church services online. You don't want to be the type of person that just go to hear a word. But when you leave out of there, you're still the same person. And this is literally ha been happening week after week, month after month, where the word of God has not... Um, you have not taken it and applied it to your life. So you're not seeing any fruit, meaning you're not seeing the benefits of what comes along with doing God's will his way. So in Jesus name, I pray that this encourages somebody that get it to apply the word that you're hearing every week um, to your night, to your real life, um, to your character, apply it to your attitude, you know, apply it to your finances, your finances, apply it where it needs to be, you know, because those are the areas that are not surrendered to God. And he's sending words to minister to that place for a reason, um, not because you're um, being judged or put down or condemned. It's basically because the Lord wants you to submit those areas to him so you can start to see fruit. And so um, I thank and praise the Lord for this word. I pray that whoever get this message is blessed by it. If it blessed you, I pray that you share it with somebody that need to be encouraged that, you know, have been just living in a cycle of Monday through Sunday all over again. Same thing, same thing, same thing. Um, so I pray that you are able to be a blessing to somebody else by sending them this word to encourage them to step out of that repeated cycle so they can start to see fruit from God and um, obedience is where fruit comes from. In Jesus' name, bye.